Well, it's time to talk about something sweet now as we go to Nikki Boxler in Western New York, a maple sugar farmer. And Nikki, uh, the sugaring season when you tap the maple trees, you make that beautiful amber syrup eventually. Now, what do you look for when you look at the ideal temperatures to get that sap flowing? So after a deep freeze for the sap to really get flowing, you want it to thaw during the day and then freeze at night. And you want to see a series of that, so of thawing during the day, freezing at night, and that's what really keeps the sap running. The season typically lasts anywhere from six to eight weeks, and it's all very weather dependent. So if it warms up and stays warm for multiple days in a row, that is not good for us. It is not good for maple season. If we get a lot of snow or ice storms, a lot of wind, that just has an impact on the lines because we run tubing throughout our wood woods. That's how we collect all the sap. So if we have the windstorm, that causes a lot of damage to the line, which then we have to go fix, and that impacts how much sap we are able to collect. So when I go to the grocery store and I and I am going to get maple syrup, sometimes I say, wow, that can be expensive, but there's a lot of work that goes into it, right? Can you explain a little bit behind the price tag or how much work goes into making maple syrup? For the process, it is a very physical, manual labor job. So. Uh, maple trees that grow naturally in the northeast here, and they're all over the place. So you're trekking through the snow and tapping all the trees. So how it works is we carry a drill, hammer, we have a whole kind of tool belt on us, and we go to the, a maple tree, we tap it, which is essentially drilling a hole in the tree. We put a spout in it, and then that collects the sap from the tree, carries it into our holding tank, and from there, we take it back to our building, where it is run through a reverse osmosis machine. We're a larger operation, so we use a reverse osmosis machine. If you're tapping in your backyard, you're probably not gonna do that. You're just gonna boil it down. But the reverse osmosis machine removes some of the water content from it. So it puts it into two products. So concentrate, which is concentrated sap, and permeate, which is essentially just distilled water. And then from there, it's put into the evaporator where we boil it down till it becomes maple syrup. And there's absolutely nothing added. It's all 100% straight from the tree. And it's really cool. I've um, actually made some syrup myself, the old, you know, no reverse osmosis here, just boiling it down for a few hours. And it is true what they say that 40 gallons of sap makes one gallon of maple syrup. Isn't that right? That is correct. So it depends on the sap, the sugar content of the sap. So it can take anywhere from 40 gallons, which is on the generous side to, we've had it as high as 63 gallons of sap to make just one gallon of maple syrup. All right, Nikki Boxler, a maple sugar farmer there in Western New York. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me.